Good morning to all of you. I would like first to thank my friend Helga LaRouche and the Schiller Institute and all of you for extending this invitation with, to me to be with you this morning uh, on a topic that touches my heart. I'd like to speak about uh, Syria and the world order and reflect on what happened during these last 10 years uh, and how is that relevant, in my opinion, to what your respect, respectful conference is discussing. Right from day one of the war on Syria on March 15, 2011, we felt that we are fighting a double-edged war. One that is going on the streets with people of flesh and blood being led by well-organized, secret forces which instruct them what to do and how to do it. And the second parallel war that deals with concepts and narratives and focuses on confusing the Syrian people about what is happening in their country and what is the ultimate objective of all these extraordinary movements, both on the streets and in Western media. I remember that on the 24th of March, the regional leadership, the Syrian le regional leadership and the government of Syria met and took brave decisions, which, which were meant to answer all the requests reiterated by those on the streets. I convened a press conference for all the media corps in Damascus on the same day, and Syrian people were so happy that evening, and some of them went out celebrating, believing that the whole problem is over. Far from it. The movement on the streets and the media war against Syria seemed to get new fuel and to spread in new areas in the country. Now that we got to read some leaks from different directions, we know, according to leaked British papers, for example, that the UK officially funded Syrian men and women, calling them eyewitnesses through different agents. All Western and Gulf media were withdrawn from Syria, and the entire Western media derived its news from these eyewitnesses and from one man who sits in Coventry, UK, whose name is Rami Abdurrahman, who invented for himself a, pl a platform called the Syrian Platform for Human Rights. Western and Gulf governments were pressing Syrian officials to dissent and bribing some of them with money to join those against the Syrian government, assuring them that the political system is going to fall and collapse within a week or two. Early in April 2011, I used to meet with the American, British, and French ambassadors and tell them that what you are instigating in Syria is not going to make the lives of Syrian people better. On the contrary, it will make their lives much worse, and Iraq is a live example. Now, after all the destruction that has befallen Syria and all the death, bloodshed, and loss of lives and institution and archaeology and part of our civilized identity, it is very obvious to us that Western governments, especially their military and intelligence services, planned trained and sent thousands of terrorists with Saudi, Qatari, and Emirates money and Turkish backing to destroy Syria, and they were never interested in making Syria a better place for its people. Rather, they wanted to turn Syria to a destroyed satellite state that follows their orders and they can loot its resources, just like the war on Iraq, Libya, and Yemen. Thinking more deeply about this point, Western powers have always treated us as the colonized, actually, and derived their views about us from the Orientalists, who look down at us rather than from our reality, history, and from our set of values. Subjugating Syria was important for Western forces because Syria, as everybody knows, is the jewel of the crown in the Arab world. 
That's why they devoted billions of oil money, arms, and terrorists to do the job for them. Once they rec recognized that this is mission impossible due to the, to the resilience and sacrifices of the Syrian people, they shifted the focus from a military war to a horrifying criminal coercive unilateral measures against the Syrian people, which are illegal on all counts because they are a form of collective punishment to the Syrian people. Once major terrorists were defeated, the U.S. sent its own military to starve the Syrian people and break their will. It is now quite clear from what has taken place in Iraq, Syria, Libya, and Yemen, that Western powers are intent on destroying our countries and looting our resources. The good byproduct of the war on Syria, if there's any good byproduct, is that China and Russia got together in taking double veto more than 10 times in Security Council to prevent further military aggression by Western forces against Syria. The case of Syria was very important in highlighting the need for a new paradigm. The arrogant American sanctions against Russia and China and their blatant interference in Chinese affairs through what they call the case of Taiwan, Hong Kong, Xinjiang, is hastening the birth of this new paradigm. I think one of the reasons why President Biden was elected is to restore the transatlantic relationship that suffered greatly during the previous administration. But their efforts will not reach the results they desire for more than one reason. First, China is an ascending economic, technological, and moral force, and its alliance with Russia and other countries will certainly establish a multipolar system. But the other reason is that the war on Syria helped to prove beyond any doubt that Western policies towards Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, and Yemen are bankrupt. And the narrative that fills their, their screens and papers is no longer credible. I am telling from the point of view of our people, we no longer believe in Western narrative. Many friends of mine, I'm included, used to be avid followers of Western media. Now, none of us waste his or her time to know what they are fabricating and what truths they are trying to conceal. Credibility is of utmost importance, whether regarding people or states or systems. And once it is lost, the party no longer exists. The latest example is what the OPCW did towards Syria. Although those who went on the ground to investigate the case gave clear evidence that the OPCW changed the facts found out by the team and wrote its own untruthful report to incriminate Syria. Still, they voted against Syria. The loser here is not Syria, it is the OPCW because it has lost its credibility in the eyes of neutral and logical people. On the other hand, China and Russia are gaining credibility in the eyes of the world, and their address of the COVID-19 and of its vaccines is a clear example of the efficiency of China and Russia compared to the inefficiency of most Western countries in handling this plague. As far as our people and countries are concerned, we are sure that the transatlantic world is colonial power, but its reality and the lack of concern about lives and the greed of its ruling class in other people's fortune and the lies that their media are fabricating to market their criminal policies and worldwide had never been as exposed as they are today. I think we are witnessing the gradual collapse of 500 years old Western colonial empires and the rising dawn of the East. 
but we all have to be active partners in founding the new world system and in making sure that it reflects the ambition of humanity and the hope in a better, safer, more peaceful, and more prosperous future. The consistent efforts exerted by Schiller Institute and by all of you at different platforms are important contributions towards that dawn that we, our children, and our grandchildren are waiting for. Thank you very much. Very happy to join you. And thank you again for inviting me to speak at this very important forum.